As you prepare to read Paul's letter to Philemon, I want to give you some guidelines on how to approach this short letter, the shortest letter that Paul wrote. I believe that too often when we go to the scripture, we go to it with concerns based on our life and our circumstances, and therefore we want it to answer questions that it was never written to answer. Now that's not to say that the scripture doesn't speak to every single aspect of our lives, because it does. But first, we must let it be faithful to itself. And then after we understand the meaning that, that God embedded there in that text, the meaning that he gave through Paul to Philemon and to the church that he hosted there in Colossia, once we understand that, then we can begin to ask, how does this apply to our lives? With the book of Philemon, so many people have gone to it wanting to find in it a condemnation of slavery. And obviously the desire for that is understandable. But if we look carefully at the text, we don't find that. We don't find Paul writing to put an end to slavery in the first century. We can't even find clear evidence that Paul was writing for the purpose of getting Philemon to release and set free his slave, Onesimus. Paul's concerns were different. Yes, slavery in the first century was still slavery. It was not the kind of slavery that we know from the history of our nation in the 18th and 19th century, which was race-based, which was one race dominating another, considering itself to be superior that's not what first century slavery was, but it was still slavery and it was still could be brutal and could cause people to endure terrible mistreatment. And certainly the Bible encourages us in every circumstance of life to stand up on behalf of those who cannot stand for themselves, to fight for justice and to fight for what is right and to oppose what is wrong. Paul would have certainly declared all of that, and he does in various ways and in various places. That's not his concern when he writes the letter to Philemon. When Paul writes the letter to Philemon, instead his concern is what does it mean for us to be the church? Whatever our legal status is, whatever our rank is in the world that surrounds us, in our culture, in society, the reality is that as the blood-bought, redeemed people of God, we are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We have the same Father, God. Jesus is the Lord of each and every one of us. So it doesn't matter the differences in our wealth, in our status, in our position. We are brothers and sisters. What does that look like to live that out among the community of faith? Here's what we do know concerning this letter. It was written by Paul from prison. He wrote, having encountered Onesimus, a slave, whom he is now sending back to Philemon with this letter, making an appeal for Philemon to receive him as a brother, no longer as a slave, but as a beloved brother in Christ Jesus and also to return him to Paul so that he can minister to Paul's needs and so that he can minister on behalf of Philemon, since Philemon cannot be there to do that himself. We think that Onesimus was a runaway slave, but some have suggested otherwise. We think Paul was in Rome, but some have argued Ephesus. So there are some things that we don't know for certain and we don't need to know those things. And then there are other things that we don't know at all. When we try to read any portion of scripture, in this instance, to read the book of Philemon, and in it, try to find the biblical rationale for the end of slavery, we'll be disappointed because that's not what it is written for. Instead, it is written so that Philemon, Onesimus, 
those who are part of the church at Colossia would see what Paul had written to them in his letter to the Colossians, the difference that Jesus makes in our relationships, to see this fleshed out in this specific example. What does it look like for a slave who may have been a runaway, who may have stolen, but we know this for certain, his legal status was as a slave, as property, for him to come back to his owner and be received not as property that has been returned, but received as a brother in the Lord, as a member of the family of God, as an equal before God and under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's a lesson for each and every one of us. It doesn't matter at work whether we are a boss or whether we are a laborer for the boss. It doesn't matter our position and standing. It doesn't matter what our wealth is. What matters is our status in Christ. And that status in Christ is that we are equals, brothers and sisters standing together at the foot of the cross where the ground is level.